Hey, what's up, Michael? How you doing, man? Okay, good to see you, man. You have a good week, brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's It's been obviously hectic still, you know, from work and all that stuff. But yeah, yeah no, it's, it's been great. Um, yesterday, I, I don't know if, if people on social media saw, but I got invited to uh, the Ducks game, like the you know, the mighty ducks. Um, and they invited me as a guest and I got to ride on the Zamboni and wave to the crowd with the lightsaber. And they say my name over the, you know, the, the intercom and they put me on the jumbo screen. It was, it was fun. It was fun because my kids were there. Yeah. So my, I could see my kids just waving at me like, thousands of people it was like yeah yeah it was all on you huh oh yeah and my my uh seven-year-old she was really funny because she she was like daddy like everybody was cheering for you and like they probably think oh man they're such lucky to have a daddy like that and i was like oh thank you she's like i i i'll be your biggest fan on 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 tiktok and on instagram Uh, i'm like oh man that's i know this so that that made it all worth you know that's awesome brother yeah congrats on that man that's really cool thank you thank you um but yeah how about you michael you had a good week Man, thanks for asking. I, I have, man. I've been playing all around at, at the house um, with some six scale um, diorama stuff. I'm building this big Rancor cave um, for the Jabba's yeah. Palace and I've and, uh, been having a good time with that. And then, you know, it was really cool when uh, we reached out to to our boy over there at uh, Jazz Inc. And he said, man, it would be an honor to be on the show. And I was like, great. How soon can you do it? And yeah. then we were able to get him in the schedule and get him in here, man. I'm excited to have him on the show. Yeah. So as you know, if, if you've been under a rock for a while, I'm sure you know Jazz Inc. and amazing dioramas and vehicles um, that uh, Yost, J- Yost makes. We're going to bring them on. We're gonna, yeah, yeah, we'll talk to him about that. Right? We're going to correct the name because everyone says it a little bit different. We got to hear it from the source. Uh, Yost. I think I said that. <laughs> but let's bring him on. Yo's from, oh, ja- from Jazz Inks. Uh, let's bring him on. Hey. Hey. Big compliments. I mean, I, I wanted to, I always wanted to say this. Your intro is just epic. The music uh, and the history. That's very cool. And you got my name you. right. Yost. <laughs> Yost. There you go. You you heard it from the source himself, Ghost. You got it. That's funny. How you doing, buddy? Uh, uh, good. A bit st- stressed uh, because we uh, we lost our internet connection uh, yesterday, so we're doing this on uh, on on data stream, hoping okay. that uh, we've gotten this uh, this stable. So if there's yeah. a glitch somewhere, uh, you'll know why. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. We've been uh, firing on all cylinders. Uh, and what a year! <laughs> what a year! Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing yeah, to I, see me grow. Yeah, and I can't wait to talk about some of your projects and stuff that's that's happening. Uh, but before we get into that, we always love to ask our guests, kind of what. Obviously, you know, most of our our our, our followers are passionate about star wars all, all all franchises that you know comics and all that but star wars you know a big a big franchise for us um you're a star wars fan i'm assuming right oh yeah, oh, yeah. what what you are talking to the official or i used to be at now i don't have the time or i was the official darth vader for the netherlands 501st working um, cool. a lot doing a lot of events so yeah i'm i'm hardcore man <laughs> that's cool well, well, what kind of what got you into Star Wars like as a child? I mean, I, everyone kind of has their own personal story about Star Wars and what it meant to them as a kid. Um, how did you how did you end up loving Star Wars? Well, it's very simple. My uncle Ben, uh, my dad's brother. He's uh, unfortunately he's passed the uh, um, a couple of years ago. So he he he. That's one one of my big regrets that he never got to see this what we're doing. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, yeah, that really gets to me anyway. Um, so, um, yeah, he was, this was eighties and we live in the East of the Netherlands. So the Netherlands is like a small backwater in Europe. And then the East of the Netherlands is the backwater of the backwater. So it wasn't a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And my uncle Ben, he had some connections and, um, 
he used to be able to get his hands on on video VHS, uh, and 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 he he had two VCR so he could copy some of the stuff that he got his hands on, and so it was it was through that um, illegal copy of a VHS tape that I first saw Star Wars in the early '80s. So I, I was still uh, I, what, what was I eight or nine or something like that. Wow. And and this is in um, in a town where you were lots lots of tough guys and you were either an athlete or you were a, a nerd and goodbye so mm -hmm. um i was one of the you together with my with my uh, um my my cousin tom he uh, he was also very much on board but you shouldn't like we shouldn't bring star wars figures to school because that would get your ass beaten up really <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway but i just that, that grabbed me from the start and you gotta imagine that this is without any press or any nothing, right? And um, uh, so we had ne never heard of, of George Lucas and Star Wars or anything. And, and it's just this blank VHS tape with a label Star Wars and, and my uncle saying, oh, watch this. I think you might you might like this. So I remember I got I got very sick the day that I was going to watch this with the family. So I was in my uh, one or two days later, I was in my uh, pajamas watching this and I forgot all about being sick, man. That was that transported me like nothing else ever had. And I remember as soon as I got better, I I, I cracked open my uh, my my savings pig unit thing, and I wanted to get uh, a figure. Like uh, I, th I thought Han Solo was very cool, but of course, this being a backwater town, there was one toy store, and they had one figure available, and it was Hammerhead. Oh, that's, really that was that's, so cool. Crap. that's cool. Well, not, not not for me because a I wanted Han Solo or Han Solo, and and b I'd only seen the first first VHS of of A New Hope, so I had no idea. Oh no, no, Hammerhead is in there, and he's in the um, he's in the canteen, Sarah. No, 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 I was thinking he was in Jawa's Palace. No, he was in the canteen. But anyway, it was a big disappointment. Of course, I bought him. Came with that very cool stormtrooper rifle for whatever reason. Um, yeah, and it's been um, all uphill from there. You know, I had a couple of cool memories. You know, uh, on a Sunday with my um, with my uh, father and other uncle who's passed away, the father of my cousin Tom. We went to see Jedi in in the movie theater, first time in a movie theater. So that was cool. Yeah. And the same uncle Ben, he had um, he he did interiors for stores. And so as soon as he got a chance to do a toy store, um, he arranged that me and my, my, my cousin Tom could go in on a, on a Sunday, the day before they opened and yeah. have our pick of the store. And there was this big display and they actually had the Kenner Star Wars figures in stock. And I could just get almost pretty much what I wanted I, that, that day. I, I will never forget that. Right. So that's really cool. You still have Hammerhead or no? No, no, I was stupid. I sold everything when I was uh, like 18 or something and uh, felt too cool for those kids, those toys. So, but then that one figure, even though it was Hammerhead, not Han, and he kind of more special than Han would have been. Come on, yeah. I, I, like I said, I was stupid, man. I should have kept that. But... That's funny, yeah. yeah. Now, let's let's dive in. Have you, yeah, have you and just just to follow up, did you collect like the figures like going forward after that, or were you more of a because you know we always ask, did you actually play with them? Did you set them up? Were you one of those types that like set up the dioramas and like with your toys, or actually like played with them out in the mud? No, no, I, I played. I actually played with them again with my cousin Tom a lot. But my my uncle Ben, he had uh, uh, one son, and he was uh, he was so lucky because there was an extra room in that house, and Uncle Ben did. He had the the ATAT. Uh, he he created a custom diorama for that, and uh, so with Luke hanging from it, and uh, uh, the one foot of the ATAT -AT on the snow speeder, and he had <clears throat> he had everything, and he had several's of everything. So he had the collection boxes, and he had all the extra stuff that you could get with the with the the codes, the barcodes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's why how I got the you had the the gun for from. The 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 the, the scout, scout trooper 
That Ooh. was one of the things you yeah. could get with yeah. barcodes. Yeah. Yeah. But I really played with that a lot. And then when I got to my uncle's, I saw the, the cool dioramas. He had some type of meditation chamber thing, I remember. Yeah. And another diorama on the side. And so he yeah, he was like like that with the and he was actually the first real collector I knew because he even back in the early 80s in the Netherlands, he was the guy keeping the the stuff mint in box, the yeah. figures that he took out really cleanly with a knife cut off uh the blister so that the, the he could keep the back packaging and so yeah he was he was he was the first true collector i ever met and the idea of dioramas and making custom stuff that's all uncle ben wow that's cool so i can understand why you would have really appreciated him seeing yeah yeah and yeah man he would have freaked out he would have freaked it, out I, and it would be it would be a missed opportunity if i didn't say with great power Come great responsibility. <laughs> yeah, I always go to the other Ben, Ben Kenobi, Uncle Ben. Oh, that, uh, yeah, that, that no, too. Yeah. I, I see, I see where you, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Yeah. Um, Very cool. Very cool. So yeah, so that's really cool. So is that what got you kind of as an adult um, into like how did you get into this business like and into making? Oh, no, yeah. Um, so th that was uh, uh, first. That first off, that was the YouTube algorithm. I was browsing some sometime around 2013 i think oh. uh, i was browsing the internet and on, on youtube and then something popped up from i think it was ign that did a tour of the sideshow booth mm -hmm. and again you have to imagine being in a backwater like the netherlands even now stuff like sideshow doesn't reach us uh unless you go online unless you know about it and and, and so what i saw there blew my mind still in my mind at the Kenner level, right? And then I see, I see Hot Toys. I see their quarter scale premium formats, and I'm like, whoa! I didn't. This is a whole new world, right? I didn't know. Yeah. And so, um, I have a very cool wife, and and she's like, well, uh, if 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 it if you if it makes you happy, go ahead, right? And so I got into that, and I, I went back and forth between six scale and quarter scale a bit, uh, though during those first two years, because um, I like the the impact. That a quarter scale figure could make, but I really love the the posability and the flexibility and 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 the creative stuff you can do with a six scale figure. And so I landed on six scale, and then you know thinking back to the dioramas that my my uncle had and having just a real cool display, I just kept upping the game. Right, so uh, I learned the importance of posing. I learned the important importance of lighting. Uh, I learned. Um, you know, I made these very cool, or I thought they were cool, transparent display tiles to make it more like a museum display and to get away from the toy vibe, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 so I remember this clearly. I was January 1st, and I was driving with my, um, uh, my family uh, towards uh, uh, the birthday of one of my little nephews. Uh, my wife was driving, and I got a text from one of the guys in the Netherlands. We were in a Facebook group together for collectors, and he showed me this picture of a diorama. A Death Star diorama, and bam, the the light bulb went on, and I'm like, that is cool. And so, every year, I have a project, right? So either it's designing and building a guitar, or or or, or an amp, or well, in this case, I thought I'll just design and, and and build that diorama. And I did that, and I showed pictures in the Facebook groups, and people kind of lost their shit, and um, <laughs> a lot of people. Uh, can I can I say that by the way? Yeah, it's okay. Uh, okay. So um, <laughs> the, so, so people were asking, "Oh, could you do this for me?" But you know, I had a family, I, I had another business, and uh, uh, it was it was it took me like eight months of, uh, to, to to complete this. So I was like, "Nah, that's not." And I remember this clearly. It was number thirty six <laughs> from the people who asked me, and this guy was from France, and he said, "Well, what what why not?" And I so I said, "Well, it's it's a lot of work." assembling and everything and with a diorama if you're shipping it you're shipping mostly air and this thing was huge right it's four feet by two by two or something like that yeah, right yeah. Uh, so you're shipping a lot of air it would be expensive to ship and i don't think how that i don't see how that thing would arrive in one piece hmm. um, so i said well yeah he said well we, we could solve that simply enough by one making us do the hard work for the assembly and then two, you could flat pack it as well. So uh, I thought, okay, then that would take away a lot of the work 
and I wouldn't worry about this thing shipping a lot of air and uh, breaking. So I said, you know what? If you can get 12 people together, I'll uh, I'll, I'll consider it. And within 24 hours, we got 12 people. So uh, yeah, yeah. I, I had to redesign everything because I hadn't designed that in with, with, with other customers in mind. It was just for me. I did that, and uh, we shipped them out. And uh, so the, the, just the request kept on coming. So talk about grassroots. Um, people said, oh, this is cool, but I don't have either the money or the space or both for such a huge, because that thing was solid aluminum. Uh, it was 70 pounds. Wow. Um, so it, it was big. It was it was heavy. The precision was beautiful. I loved the, the precision, everything. Well, on all your, all your projects, but to just dive into something and say, I'm going to build something the way, I mean, out of, out of the box, you came out rocking and rolling, you know, that's, I guess, when you found out that, Hey, I, I guess I am an artist because it was beautiful. I mean, it yeah, and really it's, it's luck. I, I was very lucky to have um, a guy with a, with a machining company, not too far from me that was open to doing crazy slick shit like that yeah. for low numbers. And if he wasn't, yeah. if he wouldn't have been there, I wouldn't, be where I am now. That's yeah. that's for sure. So, yeah. you, you, a lot of factors have to come into play. So you have to be able to communicate with the customers and, and be a passionate fan and and mm -hmm. start doing this stuff in the first place. And then you have to find a, a community with the grassroots excitement to to get you going. Then I needed the guy uh, uh, Leo. His his name is uh, um, to help me uh, uh, when the machines had downtime during the nights running my programs to get the stuff machined um so it was just a, a lot of support and, and 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 enthusiasm from a lot of people that made this fluke work i mean yeah how many other companies do you know that can make it work in a in six scale dioramas and that's that's the thing is because when i you know recently i've been hitting some bigger projects of dioramas i want to do a, a really big set up and, and what I've been working on, one thing that I've noticed in the six scale is the attention to detail. So you have to really be on point when you're doing mm -hmm. six scale, because it's not like the little action figures, you can get away with some details, but when you have something so big and you're building the diorama around it, you mm -hmm. know, there's a lot to it. And and like the Falcon cockpit and, you know, even, even some of the, the little hallway that you did, the Hoth hallway. I mean, it's, it's details, you mm -hmm. know, and, and just the shipping and everything, I, I, I just, I, I'm very amazed that, that, and I know you don't get rich and knocking it out of the park doing what you do. I know that you, it's a passion for you and it's really cool in the fan community. I think it's shown their support yeah. towards mm -hmm. you that they appreciate it as well. But, but everything that goes in behind the scenes and the customer service and the most thing that that would drive me batty is just the shipping. You know, I've been fortunate and everything that you've shipped to me has been in one piece, but it's you know is your is a huge support of your your customers in the U.S. Oh, yeah 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 I think uh, I I recently did the the the, the I, I looked up on the, I use a WooCommerce plugin and I could see that so it's like North America so that would be U.S. and Canada but most of that's U.S. is like sixty nine percent of 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 all that's transactions good. come from yeah. there yeah yeah well in fact so I. I don't. I wasn't really collecting like six scale or anything um, until recently. I've been introduced into that world, right? Because it's slippery slope when it comes to that stuff. But you were get up while you still can, please. I know, I know. He knows. He knows. But you were one of the first names that came up when you know when learning about six scale. That was kind of my first introduction into like dioramas and ships and all that. Um, and actually. Uh, because of Michael and because of uh, our buddy Joseph too, you mm -hmm. know, he's, he's the one who started like explaining to me, and I was like, "Wow!" So he does these. He's like, "Yeah," and he, they fit perfectly, and like, you know, the the bestas, and like, you know, just he was just, you know, explaining to me and showing them to me, and I was just like, "Man, this is amazing!" And and again, Michael is the one who introduced me really to like the whole diorama world, right? Because yeah. for me, I, I I display piece by piece just like that, and Michael has these amazing dioramas and it's oh, but yeah you. you're one of the first that i've first name in the community that i heard uh, when talking about six scale so that shows again the community was really supporting you and really yeah. uh, you know really back i, I need mean that right because for me it was a learning curve too um mm -hmm. with the shipping um yeah. we do we actually got 
documents from from like FedEx with uh, specific drop test procedures where you have to st drop stuff. What was it? Twenty times from from four feet high or or something like that on all angles, yeah. uh, or you, or you have to redesign your packaging. So the stuff oh, that we, geez. I swear to God, some people play uh, so soccer with with our stuff. It has <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I mean, it survives. We've got parts where I've shown videos in my group with one of the suppliers who also lost his shit when he saw the damage, and he showed that he could. Uh, he isn't he isn't a big guy, but he could stand physically stand on our Batmobile, and even though, uh, and that didn't break it, but the guys at FedEx broke it. I mean, yeah, 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 and and so, but it is challenging, and everybody loves that they're able to. To talk to me which is nice but yeah. mm. um i'm so glad i found i don't know uh if you've heard the name kiara yet but um yeah you ha you have to hand over the torch you can only do so much and it's hard because i know that everyone is used to dealing with you and they you don't want them to be offended that i mean it's same thing with uh tom at regal you know tom was personal and still is like you with with all of his his community and but yet you know, you know, he can't be there to pick up the phone every single time. So you have to, if not, you're not going to grow. No. And, and, and we're not a big company by any means. Uh, uh, but if, even if, if you want to be able to sustain what we're doing, uh, for me, it was the, 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 what, what is that? The, the straw that cr broke the camel's back. It yeah. was a Monday morning. I, I booted up my computer. I had worked off and everything was gone right Friday, all emails. And I, I, I swear to God, I turned it on 200 unread messages and that didn't even count messenger, Instagram, Facebook. So that was it, man. I mean, yeah. I could spend all my time answering messages and I still wouldn't get through. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, so it's, it's, it's challenging, yeah. but um, it is the, the community and the love and support by like, like say 95% or, or more of the people that makes yeah. it, makes it worthwhile and, and and they're very understanding and they know that you know there's a limit to what you can do so for sure for sure yeah well, you're always i don't care what business you're in you're gonna always have that that total group that needs to be burned in, in a in a big pile <laughs> but, but yeah i i understand exactly what you said it, it doesn't matter but but you've done really well man i'm i'm yeah I'm very impressed thanks thanks man we try that's that's all we can do yeah, it shows. <laughs> so, so yo, uh, let me let's let's pull up your website because I want to go through some of your your projects so just to just to show people kind of what we're we're talking about here because a lot of these are just mind blowing. Mm -hmm. um, so, first and foremost, right? That's your your website, jazzingdiaramas right. com, and that's where that's probably the easiest way to order something or the only way to order something only way yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. we don't have dealers we don't uh this is uh sales exclusive yeah through through the website we're working on a new website we have been since march uh got a professional company working on it to, especially to get the uh the the user experience uh better so the my account area with all your orders and okay. one, one of the things that people request a lot is if i'm on a payment plan and i want to pay off yeah yeah uh, at, it's at, the at, only at, hiccup I've had in your whole system, but everything else is beautiful. But yeah, that's the that, understandable. Maybe yeah, so we're, we're, we're working on that. We we built this ourselves uh, on a Saturday with with plugins. So it's it's WordPress and WooCommerce right. plugins strung together. And at, at at a certain point, you just go beyond what that system can handle. So we're working on it. We're working Good on deal. it. Awesome. Yeah. So let's. I mean, let's jump into some of these. I think it would be a Fair to not start with this one for Michael. <laughs> My, yeah, I love this thing. I oh this, yeah, this thing is beautiful. Um, so what can what can you tell us about this and the progress and and kind of where this bad boy is at in production? Okay, so we're we're done with the design. We've made a couple of modifications and and um, and updates to the design, especially the details with uh, um, because of a couple of people in the community that gave us some final feedback. Mm -hmm. um, and now, Michael, I'm sorry to say that for the next month or two, it's going to be on the back burner because yeah. um, the first 
big thing, and I'm talking literally big thing that we're going to be making with these new production techniques is the 1989 Batwing. And we're going to be applying, uh, oh, so no, okay, so we're trying two different approaches to make this. Mm -hmm. And the best one uh, uh, is uh, the one that's, uh, that's going to be uh, used. And that production technique, it would be an entirely too technical story to explain what the differences are going to be. That's what we're going to be applying to the snow speeder. So it would just be too much time and money to have four tracks running yeah. for two yeah. different projects, right? So um, what we're learning from the uh, the Batwing is, is what we're going to be applying to the snow speeder because both are going to be behemoths. Yeah, yeah. So if you don't mind, I mean, I'm not asking like from like, like there's a lot of this stuff subbed out. Like, do you have a company that, that will like, who does the painting and uh, do you, is that done in house? And uh, do somebody It really do depends that? on, 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 on what, what project. So, um, I do, uh, some work. I've got my boys and one of their friends do the work. My dad, of course, who's been with me since the beginning. Um, and the rest is, uh, for suppliers. So we do, um uh the first run and uh the first paint and then we teach uh, a couple of suppliers and we've rooted out the suppliers that we weren't happy with uh to do exactly what we're doing so that we can scale up uh the the production for these especially the, the warner stuff now that, that it's licensed we can do some ser well a little bit more serious numbers still very small compared to like sideshow or hot toys whatever but but still for us some serious numbers and then uh it comes back to us we uh check everything and it and it goes uh in the boxes and and then we we ship it out very cool are you now that that you're you're working with a license like a lot of times uh lucasfilm licensees or licensors they they'll take the like they can go to lucasfilm archives and they can get reference and stuff there and and do you do any of that type of stuff or, or or do you just do they send you over how do you get like for example this beautiful detail in this ship right here where does the reference come from yeah um so it really depends on how modern the the design is okay so for the the more recent uh, uh um movies we can get some serious reference stuff sometimes even some 3d models now, those would be 3D models that were made for visual effects, so they're useless for production. You'd have to just start over to make them solid and in the into the parts that fit together so they can actually produce it. So most stuff was never designed to actually be made. And so we have the challenge of, how, okay, how are we actually physically going to make this, right? Um, and and for the rest, especially for stuff like this, it's just a lot of um, looking at pictures. Uh, and and so for the eighty nine Batwing, one of the things that delayed us there is um, we had the model ready and we were almost ready to go into uh, prototyping. Actually, that 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 very next day, and then uh, you got what's that show called by uh, the guy from the Discovery Channel? Uh, from MythBusters. Come on, what's uh, Adam, Adam Savage? Adam Savage tested right. They got behind the scenes, I saw uh, cl up close with the one of the prototypes because there are several and several scales, and they're all a bit different. So that's another thing to take in mind. Keep in mind, that's always a challenge for us. That thing is freaking huge. Yeah. But it's like the same with the cockpit. You have the five footer and you have the whatever, and they're they're all different, especially the cockpits on the Falcons, on the different scales in the movies. If you look at the movies, you're gonna see the cockpits are look very different depending on which scale model you're seeing in that particular scene. So mm. that's always a challenge. So we had to adjust a few things there because there's no other real and there are no 3D assets, there are no close-ups, there's no so they're much better about this now. So for later movies, especially upcoming movies, as a license uh, licensee, we get close-up pictures of pretty much everything on the physical model. Um, and so we can be 100% sure for the releases of the modern stuff that we can, uh, we can make that absolutely 
pitch perfect, 100% accurate, you know? Nice. Yeah, cool. Awesome. So, okay. So the bat wing is kind of the next, next in line. Um, what? So, no, so when it comes to next in line physically, we've finally gotten the approval for the packaging of the 12 scale BVS Batmobile. Ooh. So that is, I can show you. Yeah. Uh, can you see that? Uh, That's very cool. Uh, share the screen. Here we go. Uh, let me just pull this up yeah no that's oh sorry am i picking the wrong one yeah i think so okay. um there's there's this one. yeah there you go yeah, yeah, yeah. so this is going to be the box for the 12 scale uh batmobile now imagine the uh the batmobile logo and everything that's going to be embossed uh gold wow. um gold foil and then uh, there's going to be a, a UV spot lacquer on the car and the logos, so this it's going to be a really high end, high end uh, d uh, case or uh, box for collectors. Congratulations, man! It's yeah. very. I mean, this is it's crazy. You can't even get an idea because it's six scale. It's funny every time when I we see this stuff or we show it on the computer, you really can't get an idea of how freaking big that box is right there. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, so so that one uh, 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 the supplier is is going to start printing that in the coming week, um, but with the, the the printing process, that's going to take several weeks. Then it gets to us, and then we can start packing everything up. So um, we hope to be able to start shipping those use it units physically uh, end of February, early March. Wow. Um, and we're working on um, making uh, so, so and the other product that is very close to or that is starting test runs for production is the 1966 batmobile Ooh, okay let's so you got to imagine huge huge physical molds um to get this made uh and and is it, we're talking hundreds of molds for um uh, hundreds of both of these right both of the yeah uh, well yeah the the the, the left one of those two is the DX. This is the base version, so it, that doesn't have the light up for uh, features and uh, and and the extras that that do, do come with the uh, with the DX version. We've made that. We built a custom board for that one actually. So uh, together with uh, uh, Ralph uh, from Tenna Controls, we've gotten a, a PCB board custom made for this uh, vehicle, so that not only do you have all the lights, but it all the uh, all the patterns, all the blinking, and everything uh, is exactly like you see in the television show. So, um, yeah, yeah, I get it. I for get the it. DX version. I yeah, get this. <laughs> I'm like, That's this so hilarious. Uh, this I mean, one in the '80s. <laughs> I'm like, I'm he has done falling down the rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> Deep, dude. Oh, this is beautiful. I love it. I mean, this is one of my favorite series. Yeah. And so for the DX version, there's going to be flickering lights in the back. Uh, and we're actually going to try and make a transparent flame that you can plug in there so that it looks like uh, you, the, uh, the, the, the the turbine is flashing uh, and and got this exhaust flame going out. So uh, that's pretty cool. It's cool seeing the old mag wheels and stuff that they used back in the day. Yeah. Man, that's really cool. I'm into cars, yeah. so... Oh yeah, and and this one we it took eighteen months to get right. We got uh, a lot of experts weighing in on this, but again, there are six different versions of this vehicle, <clears throat> so even the experts couldn't agree on some parts. But we 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 went down to the air tube coming out of the rims and the 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 the, the, the tread, or what is it, the thread or the tread, the tread on, on, of the, the tires. Tread. Yeah. That is even screen accurate now. You know, one thing I really, re I'm sorry to catch up. The one thing I really respect a lot about you is how you do reach out to yeah. your, your customers and to the viewers of, you know, Hey, what, I'd love to have your feedback. You know, what, what do you think about this? And, and I'm sure you get bombarded, but you know what, it's good yeah. to take it all in and see what, what's coming in, what's not coming in and, and take it all together yeah. and see what, what makes sense. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah and, and a lot of the best ideas come from the group. I mean, yeah. with the uh, with the Batmobile, that was a group initiative. Uh, actually, that started the same as that very first diorama where people asked, "Okay, so it's now clear that Hot Toys isn't making it. Could you?" And I said, "Well, 
I need an, a, an X amount of, of people to commit and then we can do it. And again, within 24 hours, we yeah. had that commitment. And then they suggested, okay, if you look at that vehicle, it's very close to the one in the Justice League. Basically, they took the BVS Batmobile and they switched out parts uh, and made the Justice League version. Why don't you make switch out parts? And we were pretty well into uh, prototyping at that stage. But I thought, again, good idea. Let's do that. And and same for the diorama base. All that's that's the beauty and the reward of of including the 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 group uh, in 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 all the ideas, really. Yeah. Really Man, it just it's so cool, and it's just so amazing that you have again the license because it just I think allows you to to just create just better looking things, right? Because you have these these resources and these um, these uh, references, right? Well, a lot was done when when it was just still a fan group stuff, uh, where where it's just me and the group trying to get it just right. Uh, so um, there's a lot of that that was my stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's a lot of passionate fans out there that help uh, help get the best out of us. So yeah. Very cool. So okay. So then after after that Batmobile, what are you what are you looking at? What should we look at next? All right. So uh, other stuff that's in the pipeline. Uh, yeah, so it's the '89, and um, and then the, um, uh, the 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 snow speeder is coming up for production. Before that, the uh, the bat signal is going into production. Um, I'm probably forgetting a lot of stuff. There's a there's a lot of balls in here. It's got a got a lot of suppliers working on a lot of stuff. Um, so this one, uh, uh, is, is going into production. So that one is going to be released before the summer. Uh, if, well, if Warner brothers, uh, approves, uh, uh, fast enough for all the steps in the process, because of course it's, it's their IP. So it makes total sense that they want to make sure everything is totally accurate and correct. So yeah. every step of the way we have to submit it for approval. And so all these products have been approved, so they're coming, but. Uh, uh, to get them through that gauntlet, really. Uh, I mean, we've been working with them since March, and so the, and the first products are finally uh, ready for packing. Nine months later, so yeah, you, you, you got to be patient, right? If you don't mind me asking, so when, when you are, um, we've talked to other people in the licensing process of getting things approved. Is, is it? It, working with Warner, has it been difficult? Or are they pretty? Do they work with you pretty good? Or are they coming back with you about the actual design of something that you're putting together, or more of logos? Or I mean, w what's been the outcome of the the collaboration between you and the Warner team? Well, so first off, they the reason why they wanted to work with us is because this was um, such a a fan based product and, and 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 team and 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 effort so um that was really cool for them because basically we're so small we're such small fish that they could have easily said well uh not worth the effort right yeah for sure. um and so that that was very cool of them and then it's a process of learning on both ends because these the people at warner they have to approve this they also have to approve looney tunes t-shirts Harry Potter stuff. Yeah. I mean, the, the the amount of licenses, if you think about it, that 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 Warner has, Game of Thrones, Friends. I mean, it 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 just it doesn't end, and and so these people have to be pretty much specialist in everything. Yeah. So it's a learning curve for both of us, uh, but they really want to make it work, uh, and and so um, as long as I do my bit, uh, and we got a, a bit of noise on the line as we say in the netherlands at first about uh, how how to do certain things but then again they were very good at working with me to to get things sorted out so with the packaging and all that there were basically there were two different style guides that were conflicting and the people didn't know what what they were having to, have to look at so it's all that sort of thing um but yeah it's um and and they're hiring all the time 
to that team just to keep up with all uh, all the uh, the demand and all the products that are coming out. So yeah. um, this... I'm amazed that they they are willing to work with us considering how busy they are. Well, that's so cool though that you were just you know look at you two years ago and now you're working with a licensed company and man you're, you're definitely heading in the right direction man i can yeah. only imagine how overwhelmed you are and <laughs> it's pretty cool though man congrats on all that thanks so, so let me let me ask you because this is probably one of the most popular um dioramas you know in in our collecting circles right i mean i think pretty much everyone in that are that collects this stuff that are friends pretty much owns this right and it's just right. such a popular thing um what kind of got you kind of inspired to to make this it was again it was the group so um the, basically i had um they they had asked me for years to do this because hot toys it teased them and i have a rule i don't touch anything that hot toys does uh so that's why i don't revisit stuff that hot toys has done um I got recently got a question for the alien that what is that the, the the loader thing it's been done so i'm not touching that and so that's why i i i initially did the cargo hold because people kept asking me for the cockpit i said no there's a chance hot toys might still do it mm -hmm. there was still rumors back then and so but i thought hey the, the falcon is bigger than just the cockpit that's what got me started on the cargo hold right and then i don't know it must have been uh 18 months ago because that's the lead time for these big projects um i got word that it was definitely not going to be done by anyone mm. and i thought well screw it then i'm i'm, I'm going to try this mm. with everything that we'd learned um uh, especially with the batmobile and uh, and lighting uh, for also for for the other things that we've done so but it was a challenge to get those 300 plus lights uh and the sound and all that stuff working mm. um but it was it was again just the community uh asking for uh, us to do this and this is more of a prestige project so we're mm -hmm. now down to the final few in stock so th these are all done they're in stock ready to ship but um once those are gone this is definitely not something i want to revisit <laughs> and, and and yes i want to ask you and this is this is kind of going to be like the hard-hitting question right in, oh in here our, we go the hard-hitting question here 60 seconds yeah all right the color i know there's been some debate going back and forth when they receive that it's too gray it's not enough white it's you know and, and again i'm not i'm not a six scale collector but i've heard some of these arguments <laughs> can you kind of run us down the color processing and, and kind of explain to you know to viewers what why you chose kind of the, the color scheme yeah so it, it's important to understand that first of all the, the first batch that shipped out that was the color that was exactly like the pictures on the website and the prototype so mm -hmm. you know that that's what we ordered and there was a lot that had to do with lighting because this one looks darker than it does in light because as you can see the lights coming from behind so you're looking at the shadow side now so that always messes with things but the, re the reality is that there's a lot of there are a lot of different versions of the of the cockpit like i said not only in terms of color but in terms of design if you look at the front of the cockpit and if you look at the the i think it's the five footer the front is entirely different the nose is much steeper the the windows are completely different so you have to make choices mm -hmm. now what messed us up was basically uh what what is the what is the name of that star wars park that opened up uh with disney? galaxy's edge yeah 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 so the one you see there is basically a model from one of the later movies and that's a lot lighter and mm -hmm. that's where people started to complain about the difference in color between this which is much more uh closer to the very early movies um and what's up at galaxy edge but that also had a very different outside design with the scaling you see on the outside so mm -hmm. yeah um it's 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 hard you have to make choices uh, i was very happy that people weren't complaining about the fact that we chose because i like this nose design better than the other one but both have been equally valid right i mean yeah they're, 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 they're the so the the answer is there's differences in the movies yeah, yeah. 
even within the same movie, different scenes. And here you see it again. Look at the front yeah. and the sides. The front looks a lot lighter, even though the, the color gray is exactly the same. It's just yeah. so a lot had to do with lighting as well. Yeah. Uh, and and people, yeah, even uh, um, I like it. One of the guys on YouTube has this term called the head cannon. People have mm. their own version in their head, and I can only make yeah. one version, right? So, yeah. Let, let me, uh, perfect example is this studio scale model that we that was built and this one is accurate as can be to the original right. and lighting is everything so right. I, I i i'm 1000 percent behind you i i have heard a few things but yeah the lighting like this model is just completely different when like we're building a studio gallery right now for just our studio scale models and we're going to have the proper lighting that they used in the films to create mm -hmm. those certain effects of the colors that really pop, you know what I mean? It's huge. Yep. It's huge. Yep. yep. So you, so you, so that that darker gray color, it, that's closer to what they used in the film. It was just that it was lit. It was just so well lit that it kind of gives it that impression that it's it's a lighter, yeah, yeah. lighter white. And so, for the later batches, we just took the lighter shade, the the one that was closer to the one that's now at Galaxy's Edge again, which is not accurate if you compare it to a screenshot from A New Hope, and I think not even from Empire. No. But you know, um, the thing is, you can say this about pretty much all my models, and it just got out of hand on on this one with a few people. Um, uh, it's it's about the choices you make, and yeah. Um, there's the same thing with the Batmobile. There's, um, I've had that discussion as well where people show me pictures, then I show them the daylight pictures of that actual model because I do have the actual daylight pictures and I show them that, you know, it's especially in a Batman movie, there's everything is very low key lighting. It's going to look different, you know? It's, yeah. I, you know what? Th th that same thing happened with another product, which was the, the Mandalorian helmet. I think that right. there was big thing with the Mandalorian helmet, right? Because when people started getting them, it's really dark, deep gray. And right. people are like, wait, this doesn't even look like metallic. It doesn't look shiny. It doesn't look, you know, it, it just doesn't look right. Um, but again, it was because the lighting, the studio lighting just brightens everything up. And yeah. And I, I don't know this particular case, but knowing how incredibly um critical people are during those licensing uh, mm -hmm. gauntlet processes, I can guarantee you that the original prop was not vastly different from what was shipped out. So it's a, it, it's a, it's a, it's going to be a perfect example of uh, how studio lighting uh, is going to make a massive difference yeah. in how something looks. Yeah. So out of out of all of these, kind of which one would you say so far has been kind of your your best seller? Like I have that one that everybody just just loves, as far as dioramas. Uh, so yeah, that's the cockpit. Easy. It yeah. is the cockpit, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the cockpit, definitely. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, just such a a crazy diorama. Uh, like I said, I'm not doing that again with the 300 plus lights and the sound mm -hmm. and, and everything. <laughs> Yeah, this and is so, my last piece right here. I just got one, my... yeah, Michael. We just showed it on on last week's show. Michael yeah. just received it from you. It's pretty heavy, isn't it? Man, I was gonna say, bro. <laughs> Holy cow, dude! Yeah. I can't yeah. believe how heavy that thing is. Actually, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I mean we've got a lot we can do on weight saving already. Can, I mean, yeah. it might have been um, the initial the initial early production sample was twice as heavy unbelievable yeah. i'm just glad that you did reissue it out because i missed out on the first run mm -hmm. and right. I, i'm really glad it's a it's a really cool little piece there yeah. yeah i try to stay away from reissuing stuff uh it's only when there's a lot of demand and uh i uh, i think it's possible to redo them but there's a, a lot of stuff that people ask for that is definitely not coming back like the wall mount dioramas that we did and um what about that, this? that little screen, the screen that like Tarkin stands in front of? It right, right, right. Oh, yeah, that one too. Uh, yeah, that's the that, that's another one that's probably not coming back. That um, was a really cool one, though. Did you have yeah. issues with that one or not really? No, I wasn't. Uh, um, 
looking at what we can do now, yeah, I think um, it's just not up to the quality level that I wanted it to be. Yeah. Uh, and and well, that's not true. It's I would have made it differently now with with the the, the techniques and the suppliers that I have now. Um, but still, it wasn't one of my favorites. I mean, it looks cool in a di in a, in a in a, de in a de toll for detail. I don't know why I, how, how you say this, but yeah. um, I like something with a more a little bit more dimension, like like the throne room, better than you know. Yeah. Well, there's going to be growing pains, and you're you've gone through them. But one thing that is for sure that if there is any glitches, which is there's going to be in any anything that you do, you're making them better. You know, you're you're doing you're you're learning and. And I mean, it's it's good that you don't just throw in the towel. You continue to just keep, you know, moving forward and making these things better and better as you go. And it's really, you can see the the quality is just really stepping up big time. Yeah, yeah. I even uh, went so far as to hire a company that checks uh, parts. Yeah, quality control. Mm -hmm. at the suppliers before they reach us. So there's an extra step of quality control in there now since Good. a couple of months ago. So again, you don't do this stuff to be, to, to get rich, but you do want to get rid of, of, of negative energy and, and headaches. You know, mm -hmm. that's worth a lot more than money. <laughs> this looks like a headache. I'm just going to say. <laughs> I know. That's why I, I put this up. Man. Amen, What's brother. The story behind that? Is that going to be a little work in computers or no? Yes, the DX version will actually have six light up miniature screens wow, with the actual I have the actual files that cycle in the movie. Oh, so wow. you get the actual files cycling on screen as you see in the movie. And we're working out uh, how to do this cost effectively. So we're working on prototype two right now for this one. Because wow. another thing is that this diorama, this the, the 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 bat cave computer, it floats, right? Mm. The set is actually bolted to the ceiling. Oh. So we're now working on a construction where you're not only getting the concrete floor and back wall, but also a part of the ceiling, so that we can actually suspend that diorama from that ceiling and have working computers, working working screens. So yeah. So now, as far as, uh, you know, obviously you're working with Warner Brothers with the license on this. Um, are there plans to kind of also, I, I you don't have to answer if, if you want, but for like Superman stuff or like some of the other superheroes or you're kind of not really. For not, no, no. For now, okay. no. Um, well, since we're talking. Yeah. I'm. I'm thinking about, so the way this works is you get a license and they want a guarantee up front, right? The more things you add to your license, the higher that guarantee becomes. And since we're such a small operation, I could swing most of the, no, well, all of the Batman properties, including the upcoming one, mm -hmm. as stuff that we are licensed. And, and, and so we are able to make stuff from that. Mm -hmm. um, including the 89 Batman movies, which I needed for the Batwing, right? Yeah. Um, so what can I say here? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, can you throw any little, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, let, let, let me throw out a couple of nuggets. Got a lot of you, a lot of your guys are watching you right now. <laughs> yeah. And I'm hoping for their support. So, um, let me take a, a small sidestep for the 1989 thing. Um, so I, I recently hired Luke's best friend. Luke's my oldest son. And this guy is such a cool boy. He's got, he's currently going to, to, to college uh, learning mechatronics and he learns 3d design. So he's working on something. And I, I, I promise not to tell anyone because he wants to pitch it to the group when he's done with the 3d design. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a star Wars thing. But he's also working on the the vault for the 1989 Batman suit. Oh, really? oh yeah. So, that, so 
that's something he's working on when that is done. I'm definitely going to pitch that to the group. If there's enough support, I'm going to do that. But the, the thing I wanted to discuss with you guys, I'm assuming you've seen the trailer for The Flash, right? Yes, I have. You know this one? Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you remember at the end of that last trailer, the thing under the cloth? Uh, no, let me, because uh. I'm pretty sure that's the 1989 Batmobile. You think? I'm pretty sure. What? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me pull this up really quick. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I go ahead. Don't... I don't have the license for the Flash yet. No. Like I said, I'm not revisiting 1989. I think the Batmobile, because that's been done by Hot Toys. Right. But what I also think, from what I've read online, is if that is the night uh, the, the 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 Batmobile, it's going to be a new iteration of that '89 Batmobile. I've heard rumors. Now, this is not coming from Warner, so I cannot be sure that's true, but it makes a lot of sense based on what I've seen that the new Batmobile is going to be a four-seater. Wow. So it's, it's going to look exactly like the 89 Batmobile, but since the Flash also has to come and the, 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 the other Flash you saw in that trailer and maybe even more people, I think... It's going to be an updated version. This is definitely look at that cockpit. That is definitely okay. look at that. Yeah. Oh. That is. I'm 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 willing to bet good money to say that that in the movie is going to be because mm -hmm. they're in the Bat Cave, right? With, yeah, with Mike. Yeah. So that is, and it's Michael Keaton, and Michael field. Keaton, right? Michael Keaton yes. returning as Batman. So I mean. Yeah. I mean, it makes so, it makes sense. I'm I'm thinking that so this is end of next year, right? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking if there's if I'm right, and it's it is a new version of the '89 Batmobile with the four seater. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should talk to Warner and put up a little bit more money to get the Flash license and do that one. Mm -hmm. Or and I want comments. Uh, from the people who are watching, or would you prefer me discussing with Warner Brothers to revisit and do our version of the actual '89 Batmobile? So, you, you, you two guys, what, 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 what would you say? I, I mean, I'm a big. I'm telling you, I, the '89 Batmobile for me, besides the '66, I'm just like, I love that thing. So, I think if the new one is virtually kind of identical to it maybe more weathered maybe kind of a little you know i mean i could see that you know it's aged right and i, would, and I think it's going to be a bit bigger right and i would appreciate that i would like that would look really nice like an aged 89 you know style batmobile you know kind of progressed um but truly like you know the, the original the that's that's where I would want to go, but again, I guess it depends. It depends how the the paint scheme is on it. Um, I love weathered, beat up, you know, stuff like that. So I guess it it depends how they they present it in this movie, you know. Right. Yeah. yeah so this is this is going to be a year away anyway uh, for for the Flash, and so the discussion is something I've been toying with in my head for ever since I saw that trailer. So I got. I have I have no shortages of of projects that I can do that I still am planning, um, but being such an '89 Batman freak myself, I mean I was come on I was 15 when the movie came out, so that was that was Batman for me for a long time. Yeah, for sure, still is to me, honestly. Yeah, yeah, um, I, it, 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 I, it it still is. I mean I love Michael Keaton as Batman, but. Uh, Heath Ledger and what's his name really, <laughs> really impressed me with the Dark Knight. Uh, yeah, so, that is, uh, and, yeah, and then that yeah. doing doing so much with the BVS and Justice League movies now already. Yeah. 
So it's it's hard to they, they kind of become like your kids those cars and hard mm -hmm. to pick a favorite. Anyway, yeah. So I've been toying with something like that, maybe talking to Warner about getting adding the flash to my licenses and and revisiting or seeing what that car is actually going to look like. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure we're all going to be eagerly, you know, watching you and see, seeing what, what happens there. Because, yeah, I know a, a lot of people are interested in, in that 89 Batmobile. And, um, yeah, I, I can't. I can't wait to see to see what happens. So, um, so if you could, um, if you could sure yeah. share my screen again. Absolutely. Yeah. You got some, some little, oh. Oh, 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 no, 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 that's just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, what did I do there? It's a recording. <laughs> I'll let it, I'll let it that out. No, you don't. No, no, no. Okay. I, I, I love to hear what people see, say if they see what I'm doing there. Oh, that's awesome. All right, all right. Is there anything so another in our Star Wars community guys out there that you might want to tease us with? Or, well, let's see this first. Yeah. Holy we'll moly. Yeah, so another thing I wanted to discuss with, uh, I have to discuss this with the group as well, but while we're on the subject, let's just look at this. Um, so I have, I, I could do one or one of two versions of, of this uh, of this one. Either this, one, this way where you can place it in your collection and it doesn't take too much space, uh, 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 shelf space, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Or I could fold these wings out and make the flying version uh, that you also saw, right? Mm -hmm. So um, let me see what show you what that looks like. Um, do you have uh, so so? This is for you guys and the people watching. Uh, if you have a preference, please let me know. So do you want this version? Because I don't think. I can make it so because these things are so 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 large and heavy that construction wise, I will have to make a choice to either make the thing like this and you can hang it on your wall or uh, hang it suspend it from a ceiling or make it like this and you can actually place it. Yeah, it, hands down, I guarantee you, it's going to be with the wings down. That this is one, just right? freaking badass looking. This one, right? Yeah, Absolutely. and it's gonna match the other like people that are collecting, you know, the the multiple bat wings and all that. They're gonna want kind of to match it all up, you know. Yeah. All right. See okay. what I mean? This is a perfect example how awesome it is yeah. that I mean, you 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 make these people that are viewing and watching that are that are um, collectors of your product. You make them feel like they're part of it, and it's and they are, and, and it's a really really cool thing that that people can have these things sitting in their collection room and say, you know, I would I had input on this, you know. Yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. Really, really it's cool. uh, uh, you know, de democratic. I, I mean, for the last Batmobile that we've announced, it was either going to be the 1995 one or the one from Arkham Knight, mm -hmm. and the community spoke. And they, uh, the, there was a massive majority for the 1980, uh, 1995 one. So that's the one we're, we're also making. Nice. So, but Michael asked if there's anything I could tease for the Star Wars fans. You know I want to know. You know I want to see. Shazam. Wow. Six scale TIE Fighter. Yep. So... I'm thinking of doing this in a, uh, so for the people who, who are familiar with our product line, we have the true scale line, which is true to scale, but not huge in terms of size and budget. And then we have the ultimate, ultimate DXs, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking doing two versions. One, <clears throat> that's just going to be this cockpit. Right. So the people who have the limited space and money can get a, 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 a physical cockpit. All the details, all the lights inside too for, for the cockpit. So I've got a separate model for that. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I've got That's so many models. That's a big models. piece right there. Oh yeah, it is. Oh yeah, it is. Um, yeah. So uh, so that, and then for the people who really want to uh, go all out, we're going to make an ultimate DX version with the um, wow. uh, with the wings as well. Wow. And that's I can only assume the wings are probably what, like, 
they were probably about freaking three feet, feet tall, right? five, five and a half to six feet tall. You think I, um, yeah. I got, yeah. I got pictures. I don't know who these guys are. I do. But somebody, oh, okay. Somebody sent me pictures of a yeah. six scale tie fighter in progress. Yep. Yep. So if you could give credit where credit is due. That's, um, cool of you. That's very, very honorable of you to, to do that. Yep. Um, then, uh, uh, um, People, people get an idea. Of, so, so his name is his name is Izzy. Izzy. Oh yeah, yeah, of course Izzy. Oh yeah, yeah. Izzy rocks, man. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so he's a super super classy guy. He's actually going to yep. be on our show soon too. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Izzy, you rock. We've done yeah. uh, some stuff back and forth, uh, so yeah, uh, cool. we're cool. So yeah, so this is Izzy. Izzy's work. Yeah. Uh, for those who can support him, uh, and you want, and I don't know if he's going to release this on any broader scale, go ahead. Izzy's the guy. Um, he's, he's a good, good guy, honorable dude, and he has incredible attention to detail. So, yeah. but <laughs> for the people wondering, uh, so we're doing this one. Uh, and um, so uh, I'm... Look how big the, the actual... <laughs> that's insane. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean that's so cool. and, and that's, this is, this is the problem with that one, is that as a collector, like for example, I couldn't get that one. That would take up way too much real estate in in my collection room. But someone like Michael or someone with the bigger space, I mean, this is ideal. And I mean, I'm sure Michael is gonna need one of these. Oh, I've got to get two of them. <laughs> yeah. So, so this is something that we're working on. And another thing that I've I've been sitting on since 2019. Is, I've been working on this. Oh wow, yeah. So still a work in progress, as you can see. I still have to detail this, but uh, geez, that's gonna be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, we got all the way back here, but but so we're still working on this, and I'm I'm still thinking of ways to make like a bigger version. I don't know where I'm gonna be drawing the line, literally, to cut it off, right? So maybe mm -hmm. this might be the, the ultimate DX version, and then make a true skill version that is only that's without these sides, mm -hmm. and then I don't know. Try to see if there's a detail version somewhere in here, just uh, the ramp. I don't know. I, one of the reasons I've been sitting on this is we've been ex extremely busy. The other is I just don't know what to do with this, guys. I mean, it's another thing that people have been asking. Can I just tell you, man? I mean, let, let's just quit bullshitting around. I, I, I think you need to make the whole <laughs> freaking thing. All right, Why did dude. I know you said you were going to say I that? Mean, I mean, come on, dude. I mean, <laughs> I'm a little disappointed, man. Just let's step it up a little bit. And just <laughs> make the whole damn Falcon. You know, it's only. <laughs> I am such a wuss. Uh, have you guys, <laughs> by the way, have we what? Uh, the, the pictures of the the actual the Hot Toys did make yes, a, a yes. six kill. Yeah, yeah. It's Let huge. me see if I can pull that up. Real quick. That's really cool with all the the, the soldier, all the stormtroopers and stuff out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen that one, Gabe? I haven't. No, yeah, it was up in it was in Japan somewhere. This is a person. This wow. is the six scale, <laughs> the, uh, the, the 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 thing. Uh, the, these are actually six scale figures, people. Wow. And he had them lined up when they did that. Yeah, look at all the figures and stuff. That is just a, a beautiful booth right there, isn't it? Jeez. Yeah. Cool? These are two six scale TIE fighters. Look at that. In the I back. Mean, we, yeah. just saw, we just saw the pictures of um, what was his name? Michael. Is he is he holding? I mean, that thing, I mean, that's a person that could be standing there and it's like same height. So do you yeah. think you could do it? <laughs> 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 you know I'm just giving you a hard time, bro. Come on. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. I mean I don't even know how those how the mandibles are supported. Like at that scale, like yeah. those mandibles yeah. have to be like 3D printed. I mean, I don't know. I mean, do they have to be super light? No, no, no. 3D printing would not be small, uh, would not be strong enough. But I mean, we're we're talking for this, right? Yeah. I mean, a prototype. On this scale, for just the cockpit alone, you're talking five thousand dollars, guys. Yeah, yeah. I, I I speak from experience. What did this thing cost? Yeah, this is going well, well into the five figures, maybe six. No, 
just making the one off. Yeah, it's really, really cool. It's insane. I mean, I thought it was crazy Everybody doing this, it. right? Yes. This thing is 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 already a behemoth. I mean, we're talking, what is it in the largest format? You can slide around a bit, but this thing is five to six feet wide at the widest. If you slide everything out, and then it's uh, more than four feet. And I, I put the cockpit in the in, in the back behind it, as you can see. Mm -hmm. This is already a crazy setup. Yeah, you you would That's actually crazy. need you would need a big uh, uh, where warehouse to just display this thing? Yeah. <laughs> well, there's Great. Michael. I'm building one right now. <laughs> no, you man. are my hero, man. So we'll talk after the show. No, I, I mean <laughs> it definitely has to be somebody that lives close that can help me build that damn thing. So, <laughs> but I, I really like that a lot. Yeah. Now let me show you one other cool thing that I'm. This is the first time, and I. For everybody who's getting getting any ideas, this is the last time I've done a custom job for a customer. So there's this orthodontist in Belgium, and he's got an entire office with, I don't know, like a dozen orthodontists working uh, on, on kids, and it's all Jurassic Park, right? So it's uh, actual animatronic, full-scale dinosaurs, and it's, it's crazy. Cool. And so he's building a second office, and it's going to be all Star Wars. Wow. The interior is going to be off the wall, and he's bought literally everything we've made since 2017 <laughs> that's going to be played there. Yeah. And we're making one custom diorama for him. Cool. Um, and that's going to be in 12 scale. It's going to be the um, the the hangar for the first order. Oh. And now, to, to, we, from the to, Disney, to like, clarify, I'm sorry, to clarify, the 12 scale is like a Black Series figures right yeah so we're going to be putting black series figures in there and a black series tie fighter uh, here and here wow so this is one point so uh 1.7 meters so this is the average height uh of an american man right th right there Jeez, yeah those tie fighters i, I donated mine to a, a friend but it's huge this thing's yeah. pretty damn big too well it's like yeah. it's like the disney parks right like when when you walk in yes into the that big yeah. hangar yeah, that was yeah. cool, dude. That's what it is, right? Yeah, I think that's where he got the uh, the inspiration. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can show you a projection. Uh, yeah, I can. Just to give you an idea, this is uh, this is just a cutout for the wait wait the waiting area, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the diorama. Like I said, this is a full-grown male lying uh, that, could, that could lie here. This is the depth. And wow. so uh, it's going to be uh, – that was a massive project. So once well, thank you for sharing, too. That's really cool. Yeah. Exciting yeah. that you showed on our show some of the, these things, that, like the TIE fighter and the, the, the ramp on the, the Falcon. That's really, that's really cool and exciting. So I'm not sure – if all of those things are ever going to be released, um, I mean, like like, like you said, Gabe, uh, there's going to be a lot of people like you who just don't have the space for this. Yeah. Um, if I look at the numbers behind something like this, uh, then I, I'm, I'm not sure if we can pull off enough numbers to make this a reality, yeah. uh, which is why I haven't done this one, because this one is, again, we're talking four feet in the vertical alone so yeah you'd be surprised everybody that was on board on the any of all your other falcon stuff i'd give you a pretty good idea what's really cool is you can reach out and find out how many people are on board before you go into production yeah. but i think that that tie fighter you, just the way that it you know you can display just that mm -hmm. is he showed me a picture respectfully um um and the way he displayed his is just like that you know and it, and it's it's big but I mean, it's definitely displayable. So, yeah, 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 and we, and we just that guy sets a benchmark for for quality and and, and accuracy and detail. So, um, well, he just likes doing this stuff on his own, and you know, he he's uh, he's he's helps the community out quite a bit. I, it's crazy how uh, he's a big supporter of the channel, and and uh, I just yeah. got to talk to him actually the first time last night. So it's really nice. Yeah, so it's yeah, he's a very cool guy, and yeah, um, yeah so. 
yeah so th this is some of the stuff that's uh that's in the pipeline um some of the stuff that's that's awesome thank you so much for for sharing all that um so again as far as ordering stuff obviously you know through your website um what are the what are some of the lead times let, let's just say somebody orders you know let's let, let me pull up your website let's uh something in do you have anything in stock or is everything kind yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah so um stuff in stock right now so the the, the last few of the cockpits um those are in stock ready to ship um the um the cargo hold the so the original one the cargo hold that is in stock ready to ship Hoff dioramas in stock ready to ship sand speeders in stock ready to ship um let's see what else so the v3s uh, the death star v3s they are very nearly uh ready to ship we lost uh, two weeks unfortunately fortunately because my mom and dad uh, they, they they got corona despite getting vaccinated mm. and my dad does uh does those uh v3 dioramas mm. that are, uh so those are shipping out very soon then like i said it's going to be another i think it's going to be another eight to ten weeks and then the the oh, okay so yeah, the meditation chamber that's another good one um uh the, so this is the v1 version the v2 has more detail let me uh could you share my screen again um so uh, that people can see what's new in the meditation chamber. So yeah, this is an early production sample. Um, awesome. I still have, uh, oh, what's going on? Yeah, so I still have two wow. of those early samples that I could ship out to the people who don't mind getting the early samples. And then uh, again in March, I expect to be able to ship those out. Wow. And so for the V2, we added the the um, th this thing, uh, what we call this, the clamp that holds the the helmet, as well as lights in the top that didn't that wasn't there on the V1. We also added um, um, a bracket so that people who don't have a Magic case or a Besta or a Stuva can display theirs freestanding. Mm. So this th this one is 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 pretty close. To, so there's going to be a lot shipping out if if we if we don't hit any more major uh, lo lockdowns in the couple of next couple of months. That's that's a big if, right? Yeah. Because there's not another press press conference coming tonight in the Netherlands. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but a lot of this stuff is going to come out March or April. Um, same for the uh, raised speeder. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, uh, in the the first few of the 1966. Uh, uh, there's a lot of that stuff coming before the summer. Yeah. Mm. So this so this one you'd set it up. You said it it, it fits a Besta, right, or like a Stuva. A Stuva, yeah, yeah. So the Besta, uh, it, we we did discuss doing a Besta version, but then we would have to cut the front and the back off yeah. a little bit. So then, so, does it attach? It attaches to the top of the. You the can attach it to the top. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. There, there's a. There's a mechanism where you can just screw it to the top of any display case that's big enough. So mm -hmm. an IKEA Stuva it would be ideal. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you don't have that, that's where the the, the brackets that, the, that you see in a flash on the side now. Um, mm -hmm. Here you go. Those there that that holds up the construction. Got it. Yeah, right. Yeah, I the think it's badass, man. I, I can't even get it. That's crazy. Hey, yeah. does that Vader come like that? I, I I don't know if I have that version. Where the yeah. Um. So this is the Empire Strikes Back version here. You see a box. Uh, oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Hot Toys did two, but basically they're the same. That's the Empire Strikes Back version, and then they did a 40th anniversary, which I think is just a different box design. Man, mm -hmm. I might have it. Not even know it does that. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yep. Wow. The cool thing is, all you have to do is take off the cape. Yeah. Even the hands that are standard are perfect to hold on to the chair, so you don't yeah. even have to switch out the hands, and the and the the helmet just comes off, and it slides in that bracket, and it holds it as you can see. No modifications required. Yeah. Man, did you ever think five years ago that you would be doing this kind of stuff? I mean, oh 
No, man. I, I mean, mean, I remember your first YouTube video and just showing the, you know, the, the, the star background panels. And I mean, yeah. it's great. It's crazy. And look at all this, man. This is amazing. Yeah, because you have to remember that with the techniques that I had and the access to the machines that I had back then, yeah, I could only do two and a half D. Yeah. So uh, something with a relief, no problem. But something like this, that was unimaginable, right? So um, it was that, again, the community pushed us. Uh, and then with the, the techniques we learned for the first meditation chamber and the land speeder, that was uh, a, a big... Um, a big moment for us because it allowed us to do uh, uh, learn uh, to do much more complex shapes that led to the cargo hole that led to the cockpit that led to the BVS Batmobile. So again, if the community hadn't pushed me to do the land speeder and uh, and the first meditation chamber, we tried a, 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 a do it DIY uh, rotation molding <laughs> jig and it, we, we've tried tried it all. It was mm -hmm. crazy stuff. Well, I mean, it's, it's amazing stuff. Like I said, it, every time I see some of your dioramas and things, it just like I hold myself back because <laughs> it, it, don't we need I, you? I know, I know. It's it's just one of those things where I need to control myself. And Michael knows this. Like I I, I started getting a couple little things. Like I got the, the DeLorean, right? I was like, I got to get the six scale DeLorean. Like that's just a must. I have to, the, obviously the, the bat, the 89 Batmobile, the 66, bat, but the problem is that where now, where am I going to put this? Like my wife is probably like, you need to relax. You, you, he, he didn't know how to talk to his wife. Usually. So that's what it comes down to. He's scared. We know who wears the pants over that. <laughs> yes, I, I, you have you got a, a gorgeous setup already, man. It's yeah, just, uh, I know yeah, for sure. He's been really yeah. great about about supporting me on this stuff. Um, but thinking thinking in solutions, right? So if you look at that that Han Solo and Carbonite, I mean that is gorgeous. But if you just send that to me, that the, that would be a huge space saver right there. <laughs> Imagine a couple of Maji cases, a lot of dioramas. It's gonna be cool. Yeah. No, I think the problem is mixing franchises, right? I have this thing about like, I'm only going to put Star Wars in here. Yeah. Actually, me and Michael talked about this. And mm -hmm. Michael has a different problem, similar but different because <laughs> I got a lot of problems. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 ninety nine percent of my collection is is like actual one to one, you know, replicas of of the of the props. Michael mm -hmm. collects one to one, six scale, studio scale. Vintage figures. I mean, he's got it all. So now he's breaking them into separate rooms and separate, you know, display rooms. So Michael, you know, yeah, it sucks because you got to rock. Uh, on the outside, maybe, but on the inside, it's like, ooh, you know. But I'm, I'm, I, it's, I'm not even gonna waste my voice telling everybody because they hear it all the time. They know, oh, whatever, because it's not true. Because I tell Gabe <laughs> off air that, man, I'm done, bro. I'm not doing any more yeah. of this, and then. Hey, that's what I'm gonna do. You know, it's like yeah, <laughs> a brand new. We all have it. So every, everybody that that watches our channel, we we all share that that problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's not it's not a horrible problem to have. No. I, I think especially for for awesome you know artists like yourself. You know, you we're gonna, we're gonna get your stuff. We're gonna, we're gonna be there. Gabe, um, you, 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 I just gotta say what what yeah. Gabe just said. I just I don't know if you really realize this, used to, but you know what you do. You know our channel that Gabe and I, our number one goal, what we do in this channel, not to just be positive, but to inspire. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you really know, but you've inspired a lot of people out there. You know when it comes to their own art. I mean they're not you know building big companies and licensees and stuff but i mean you've really inspired quite a few people out there and i want you to really know that it, it's impacted a lot of people and there's nothing better feeling than inspiring and, and uh you know you, you need to know i i really appreciate that but then again that comes back to the people who inspired me yeah to push Isn't it crazy? Crazy? and yeah. it's, so, it's so cool and that's why i love what you said yeah um if your goal is to inspire and be positive and add, have a positive addition to not only, okay, now I've got a philosopher, like a philosopher here, but that's a goal for me in the world, right? 
Um, I thought I came up with this, but later I saw that somebody else had said this, but one of my mottos is be the change you want to see in the world, right? So um, I can get pretty down on, on, on stuff when I see what's happening uh, and, and, and uh, even with some of the customers and how demanding they can be, but, but in, a, in a larger frame in the world. And then yeah. it's just that, okay, the only thing I can change is me and, and just uh, it's so nice. That's what I always say. It, it is nice that people notice mm -hmm. that I try to give back, and 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 what I'm doing is only because I, monkey see, monkey do. I saw people doing cool stuff, and I'm I'm trying my hand at that, right? So I'm not not very original that way. But it's not easy. It's not it's not easy, but mm -hmm. it is fun. And the beautiful thing about this is, like I said, it's more than ninety five percent of the people are, are are people like you guys with just great positive energy and, and support and understanding and, and rooting for me. Cause that's a very un-Dutch thing. That's what I love about America. Um, they, the Dutch will go like, yeah, let's see you try that. And uh, you're stupid until you succeed. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the Americans are going to, yeah, go try. You can do this, you know? And that is beautiful, man. That is the energy that, that keeps me going. So that's I really how I roll. That's how Gabe rolls. That's no doubt. Yeah. And, and look, I'll, I'll what I can tell you is the way you've impacted the, the Star Wars community and the Star Wars collecting. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I know I, your Uncle Ben would be proud, especially with his, you know, with, with his awesome setup. And the fact that he inspired you and you are yeah. now doing the same thing that he did to you for a lot of people. I, I, I'm telling you, it's it's a big deal, you know, and, and the Star well, Wars I would give. For for five minutes with Forced Ghost Uncle Ben, just to show him around, you know. Uh, yeah, I've um, had that yeah. fantasy. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it, and it's anyway. it's, it's amazing that that you've done this. And again, we all appreciate. And again, the community is rooting for you. And then yep. sometimes when you know, yeah, you might get a little criticism here or there, like you know, but ultimately, it's it's for the betterment of of, of the collecting community. And that's the one thing that. Michael and I learned from having all these guests and all, you know, this community is that we complain. Yeah, absolutely. And especially Star Wars fans. We're the biggest, you know, complainers of the mob, but it's because we have so much passion, uh, you know, around the stuff that we love. So we want it to be like perfect. We want it to recreate those childhood memories. So sometimes we are harsh, you know, on, on creators, but I think it comes from, from a side of, you know, a passion and, and, and really um, want to see, you know, your, your memories kind of blossom, you know, in your collection room. So. But still, there are a bunch of douchebags out there. there. Are. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to I wanna say a couple of things. So first off, Star Wars fans are not the worst. I, I know. Oh, really? um, yeah. <laughs> but um, the other thing is, yes, there is going to be criticism, but I think with um within limits i think that's a good thing so one of the things i want to put out there and i always uh, try to say that to the people in my group as well um there's a lot of people rooting for me and they're quick to shut down criticism so to the point where some people feel they can't even voice any yeah. negative um, thing wow. anymore and while i really appreciate that i really do because it is overwhelming at times I'm open to the criticism. That's what got me here, right? Yeah. So people watching this, be understanding towards one another. And if you want to defend my side of things, I really love that you do that, but do not shut other people down. And the criticism is just as important as... as Because I'm like, it can't be all good. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a person and I have to make... I know even if I if I would accept the fact that I would be a perfect guy making zero mistakes, which I, which is so far from reality, that's ridiculous. But doing this, having to make this to a budget and to other limitations in production, you, there is going to be stuff that's going to disappoint people. I have to make design choices every day. So, yeah. and I need the feedback from the people to know, did I make the right choice? Now, it's all about the tone, the tone of voice, and and yeah, there there are certain people who have nothing but criticism, but that's such a small percentage. So, yeah. 
Whenever. To the entire community, I want to say criticism is just as valid as an important as uh, keep rooting for me. And believe me, I need that. Root for me, please. But uh, let, let the other the other side and uh, uh, talk is, is, no is what I want to Absolutely. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, it's it's been amazing having you on here. I know you're definitely one of one of those guests that we've been we've been hoping to to eventually have on here, and it's it's been Love great. You. Yeah, I, the time has flown. I mean, ninety minutes. Yeah. Wow, guys. I know. I, know. I, know. I, know. I, know. I have a lot. Time. I know. Yeah. What time is it there? Uh, it's a quarter to seven in the evening now. Yeah. So uh, time for dinner. Um, yeah, but it is, right. has been a pleasure and anytime you want to have me on i'm there just sounds good man. absolutely sure. thank you so much yoast 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 yeah no uh y -O -S -T. <laughs> that is that is the phonetic way to to to, to write down my name and say it right yoast y o w yoast i'm just going to say j <laughs> Yo. Oh man, that's yeah. funny. I have, I have, we, we, I've had the same problem with with yens too, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, we call them yens or yens. yens, 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 yens. yens. Yeah, great guy, by the way. Great guy, yeah. yens. Yeah, from yeah, Germany for sure. Yeah. But, yeah, he's a big fan of yours as well. Everybody. And a good guy. Yeah. Thank you again for, for joining us and everybody watching. Thank you so much. Um, please comment. Uh, you know, leave some comments, leave some feedback. Uh, we definitely have a, a lot of you know little little questions obviously that we want you to answer and um you know take that in consideration so <laughs> thank you again everybody for spending your saturday evening with us uh michael any final words just thank you so much for your inspiration to everybody and the hard work that you put in with your family i think it's really cool what you're doing keep doing it keep rock and rolling and i look forward to seeing uh some of the stuff coming out here in the near future yeah, I am excited but, on that TIE fighter. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then most yeah. importantly, we'll talk a little later on, on the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So we will see you next week. Uh, thank you again for joining us on Collecting yes. Wars. Thanks for your Saturday night, guys.